Rich, we may as well start with the share price. $22.53. Is, is that where it should be? Well, we're trading. We have two public companies, one in China and one that is the rest of the world. If you back out the China value and it trades on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, uh, the U.S. company is trading at about five and a half times EBITDA this year, which is incredibly low. Historically, we've been more in the 11 to 13 times. So, you know, we're, we're, we're working at the quarter was fantastic. The results were really strong. We almost double what consensus expectations were. We beat on the revenue line and I think we'll keep delivering and the world will wake up. Well, it's funny, JP Morgan, for example, and this is just to pick one analyst, has an overweight rating and a price target of 28, talked about solid earnings this quarter and saying this was a buying opportunity. So clearly there are some, you know, uh, analysts out there at least who think that this is undervalued as a stock. So, you know, you're taking advantage of it. You're going to buy back some of your own shares. We are. And, um, you know, I've been in this job for over 20 years. So there are periods of time where the market unfairly penalizes you and there are periods of time the market is way optimistic. I think what's going on with the IMAX valuation was 2017 was a difficult year. Our business in China went through a lot of changes and, and the slate wasn't that strong in North America. But this year is completely different. Um, we were up 27 percent year over year in revenues in China and about 20 percent approximately worldwide. Um, so I think we turned it around. And if, if you look at where we are today, um, we did $41 million on Avengers over the weekend worldwide. On Monday, we did close to $6 million, which these are incredible numbers. I know you don't have a context. But after Avengers, we go into Deadpool. Right after that, we go into um, uh, Star Wars, the new uh, Solo. Solo movie. And, and then we go into Jurassic we World. We are experts something. here on the European clothes uh, when it comes to <laughs> franchise movies. Mark, I do want to point out before you ask a question that there are 10 buys, two holes in one cell in the coverage universe. Richard, it, it, it's amazing to see what you're doing, especially internationally. Just talk us through the opportunities, Saudi Arabia, India, and of course in China, which you've touched on briefly. Well, Saudi Arabia, as you know, just opened the markets to cinema and AMC announced they would do up to 100 theaters with the Saudi Private Wealth Fund. Vox opened in China. Um, most people think there's no cinema in China, but in fact, there's been one screen for a while, and that's the IMAX screen at the Science Center. So we have a lot of brand recognition there. Um, we opened the first IMAX, commercial IMAX theater two days ago in Saudi. Um, we're in discussions with AMC. I think it's a very good market for us. It could be, you know, somewhere in the 20 to 30 theater range developing quickly. Um, China, um, we have over 500 screens open with our total backlog, probably 900. Um, this week, uh, in, in a little after next weekend, uh, Avengers opens in China and we have our highest pre-sales in the history of the company. We just signed a 30 theater deal with Jin Yi mm -hmm. in China. Uh, there's a lot going on there, so it's a, it's a good time to be in the IMAX business. The dynamic's fascinating, isn't it, Rich? Because in years gone by, it was the U.S. box office that mattered. Now it's the U.S., but it's the non-U.S. that is equally as important. And China is so important, isn't it? I mean, what's the balance going to look like in box office in sort of years to come, five, ten years, when you consider the growing prominence of Chinese box office? Well, even today, if IMAX itself is so much of a global company, so only 30% of our box office is from North America. The rest is for the other 78 countries we're in the world. And I think that's just going to increase. China's box office last year was $8 billion. I think next, this year it'll be around 10 And they say in five years it'll be about 20 So it's hard to predict. Remember, we're in the blockbuster business globally. So for us, North America is not the dominant place. But I think in years going forward, that's going to continue for all movies and the U.S. will have less and less a piece of the global share. We've just a few seconds left, but we are coming to the end of the Marvel franchise after, what, 18, 20 movies. We also have a lot of OTT offerings and a lot of movement when it comes to TMT, mergers, acquisitions and content being pushed out there. With all that in the background, what is IMAX's biggest challenge? Well, I, I guess that's not our challenge because we're in the blockbuster movie. So th the kinds of movies coming out now, the big budget ones, the ones that launch franchises, those have to be done in a theater. And I think 
to really see them the right way. They have to be done in an IMAX theater. But I think the challenges are the perceptions you're talking about, Vani. I mean, I think with everything going on, you have to really keep your eye on the ball and not get distracted uh, by a lot of sideshows.